All right. Yo, yo, yo. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the second iteration of the Tactical Roundtable podcast. Um, we have some juicy news to talk about tonight because we were mainly going to be talking about the newly announced um, Division Heartland that was just announced the other day and some of the new stuff coming to the Division universe, as well as maybe kind of rolling into some things that we want to see with the teammate experience. I know we kind of touched on that a little bit with last the, the last Tactical Roundtable podcast. Um, but uh, I don't see why we couldn't at least talk about that a little bit more, maybe towards the end of the podcast. But earlier this evening, we got some very interesting information about the future of Ubisoft games. So we're going to be getting into that. We're going to let some people file in. We are joined tonight by yours truly, as well as the legend himself, the man, the myth, the legend, G Money Mozart. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. Thank you. We need we need an applause uh, uh audio cue for that guy. Uh, I'll, I'll work on that i'll work on that for the next stream <laughs> uh yo what's going on everybody uh what's up chat everybody who came and stopped by you know things are going things are going i'm excited for tonight get to talk about the games the games like always and uh see what everybody's thinking about the info not only with the division heartland but the article that we read before it's very very interesting the direction ubisoft is moving or looking to move in the future and i think it all depends on the success or failure of this division heartland free-to-play game that will be coming out within the next year or so yeah it's, i'm definitely curious to see what the game is gonna entail obviously there's been a number of people talking about the possibility of it being a br um, there's a lot of people that say they don't want it to be a BR. They want to see it be a more like the survival DLC from the division one, um, maybe with a spin on it. But as soon as you throw the free to play thing out there, you know, everybody's mind starts racing, jumping to conclusions. How are you going to, you know, finance that kind of a game without, you know, who knows how many microtransactions, which I did comment back to somebody that hit me up in the comment section of the video that I put up the other day talking about this. And they immediately said that they weren't going to play it because the game's going to have so many microtransactions. And the simple thing reply that I gave him is you don't have to buy the microtransactions. You can you yeah. can just you can just play the game. Yeah, I'm sure there will be some tempting ones um, depending on what route they go. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they go about that. And if maybe we'll see this at Ubisoft Forward in June or they're going to make us wait a little bit longer. So uh, we got about 60 people in here. So we're going to be jumping into this article that was released, I believe. Let's see. I got it up here on my phone. It was only re it was released a few hours ago, and I saw a couple of different people tweet this out on Twitter, and I kind of dug into a little bit, and then I sent it over to G Money just to kind of get his opinion on this. But I'm just going to read a little bit of the top of this article. Um, I don't know if you have it pulled up, G. Yeah. Okay. So basically the main headline of this article says that Ubisoft says it's changing strategy to focus on more high-end free-to-play games. Obviously with the recent announcement with the Division Heartland, you know, being a free-to-play game, we obviously don't know what exactly that game is going to be like, but uh, it's it basically says that Ubisoft is shifting away from its traditional strategy of releasing three to four premium AAA titles each year, but plans to launch high-end free-to-play games for all of its biggest franchises. What do you think that means? Oh, man. So I kind of put you on the spot there. No, no, that's a, that's like a, that's like a, oh man, it almost makes me sad because I feel like it's a changing of the guard. I'm getting to the age now where I want to have my cake and eat it too and the gaming industry is just moving in a direction that might not be for me much longer so what we're going to see is this model that not only works for battle royale free-to-play games but you best believe they will be moving into the phone space okay so we're going to see how this division heartland works out regardless if people want it to be survival not battle royale in my opinion it could it could take elements of a few things especially with the way the division plays and have its own kind of play style but as far as michael transactions go as far as what they're going to put out there for people to buy i do believe it's going to they they will look at the fortnite model and it will be skins 
Uh, I'm not sure, seeing how Ghost Recon did it with so many weapons and things you could purchase while you were playing the game, I don't know if it'll be things like that. But then moving forward from there, I don't know if... <laughs> could they even be looking at capitalizing with Assassin's Creed with some type of play style where you're in this huge open space, uh, quote-unquote battle royale, and there are a lot, of, a lot of players on this map, assassins or whatnot, and they try to formulate something there, as, as well as who knows what other different types of breakoffs from these franchises that they can create for the mobile platform. All I know is that the future is looking very, very weird when it comes to Ubisoft, who I love as a as a company because they they make a lot of games that I've played the past 20 years, whether it's Ghost Recon recently, Splinter Cell back in the day, Rainbow Six back in the day. And with the transformation that we're seeing now, not only into these new spaces, but how they're transforming these games, uh, Assassin's Creed did so well as far as sales and uh, the performance it had with the revenue, it was up 50% prior to the record set in 2012-2013. So for those people who think that these games are going back to the old school ways, that, oh, Assassin's Creed has lost touch, or guys like us, oh, Ghost Recon lost its touch, they're losing you know, what the essence of these games are, we might be the minority at this point because when you see the success of Assassin's Creed and now you see the DLC coming out and basically you, you're you an assassin walking around with Thor's hammer and Excalibur yeah, and yeah. this new DLC is Druids. So with the Battle Royale for the Division now, the way these games are going, Ubisoft is definitely put up, not to mention Rainbow Six Quarantine, which they're going to try to maybe pull in some people who like the horror genre. Uh... I really don't know what to think for the next couple of years, especially knowing that Ghost Recon is probably on the back burner. We might not see a Ghost Recon game for a while. It's it's looking iffy. It could go either way. It, they could release some Battle Royale games that I might enjoy. I might enjoy the Division 1. I didn't touch Hyperscape. Hyperscape seemed like a... Uh, Overwatch type of Battle Royale yeah. first person, and that really wasn't my cup of tea. So I don't know where they're, what they're going to do as far as this free-to-play space because obviously the Division Heartland is going to be like ground zero for them. They're going to see how people respond to this. And then moving forward, we don't know where they're going to take their IPs in this free-to-space market. Yeah. Yeah, oh, free to free to play market. Yeah, yeah. Real quick in the chat, uh, Yamamoto Toshiba says, "Look at a YouTube streamer called Dade Dade Fui. He play tested Heartland and said it's going to make Ghost Recon PvP fans happy. That would be interesting to check out because I have not been big with Ghost Recon PvP since Ghost Recon Future Soldier. I dabbled a little bit in Ghost War in Wildlands. It was it was all right. Um." I never really got into the PvP and Breakpoint. Um, just the way some of the movement bugs and some of the other glitches and stuff that just literally weren't fixed for months and months and months. Um, but as a Ghost Recon fan, um, I would like to see a good PvP. And obviously being the fact that Red Storm is developing it, y you would think that it's going to be PvP-centric because they pretty much handled the majority of the PvP in Dark Zones and the Division 1 and the Division 2. Yeah. So... It'll be interesting. It'll definitely be interesting, especially with that that free to play model. Um, and now moving. Sorry about that. I just dropped my phone on the desk. That probably blew out some I, eardrums I right there. Even, I don't even think we, we didn't even hear that. So I didn't hear it. the one thing, kind of scrolling down through this article, um, that I also wanted to touch on, if I can find it, was them basically saying that between now and what was it like March of 2022, they were going to be releasing. Um, Far all, Cry, all, was it Far yeah, Cry their, 6? Yep. Um, I'm trying to remember what all the ones it was. But basically that 
pretty much confirmed that we're not going to be seeing anything other than like the Division Heartland, the Division Heartland, Far Cry 6, and I, was it Rainbow Six was all supposed it's, to release? It, we're going to get Far Cry 6, Rainbow Six Quarantine, uh, Riders Republic, the Division Heartland, and then Roller Champions. This will this will all come out uh, current fiscal year that end, ends March 31st, 2022. It will include all these games. So, okay, yeah, I see that now. So and and all these games are basically coming out by September 30th. And what they're saying is the second half of this fiscal year will be nothing. So by the time September 30th comes out, they're saying they want these released. Yeah, let's just see what you're trying to say. Is, well, but... well, 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 at least the ones the ones in, in, in bold, right? The publisher said on Tuesday that the current fiscal year ending March 31st, 2022 will include Far Cry 6, Rainbow Six Quarantine by September 30th. Riders Republic, The Division Heartland, and Roller Champions. Maybe that'll come up later. Yeah, maybe that'll come up later. Um, and then what, say... what was the other one with the... Uh... That, re- that no triple yeah no triple A game scheduled for release during the second half of the fiscal year yes that's which what basically yes, inc- that's includes the Christmas season so that's 2022 the second half of 2022 no 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 that's year? that's no that's this year this which year f- with which it ends this fiscal year will end for Ubisoft March 31st 2022 okay and then they did actually finally confirm for those of you out there for those of you guys out there that have been extremely excited about uh, skull and bones which in my personal opinion I think would be a good realistic looking rival to sea of thieves they did confirm that it is still happening but it's been delayed again and basically it's been delayed to um, the fiscal year that's starting in April 2022 so realistically, April 2022 to March 2023. That's where you're going to be looking for a release of Skull and Bones. Nothing whatsoever was mentioned about Ghost Recon, so we can only assume with that being said that we're talking at least late spring 2023, fall 2023, or spring 2024 for a Ghost Recon game. And obviously, we all want to play Ghost Recon. We all want a good experience, but we all also want it to be good. So... You can't rush. Obviously, they showed that what that happens when you rush with Breakpoint, compared to you know letting letting Wildlands kind of simmer and develop for four or five years. So, obviously, only time's gonna tell with uh, the timeline for Ghost Recon. But we're not gonna be seeing it at least until fall of 2023, at least. So, which that gives us another two and a half years from now before we're gonna see another Ghost Recon game. So. Let it simmer. That, that's that's basically going back to the Wildlands model. They took five years or so for Wildlands. They flipped Breakpoint a little too quick. So if we do get something in 2023, 2024, that's giving them again, you know, another development cycle that is almost like Wildlands, a good four or five years. Yep. So, and hopefully, if maybe we're lucky, next year we do get for a, a, a year three maybe moa island is actually released and that'll kind of quench our thirst for another year yeah of of you know a little bit of content for ghost recon but you know, we'll see we'll see what happens this year we'll see what happens next year and as far as with red storm creating the division it's true some of us who are fans of this genre the tactical uh military shooter the military tactical shooter you know maybe the division heartland will give us a a little joy out of it i don't know i I enjoy i enjoy the looter shooter aspect of the division because i know what it is right i know what i'm playing when i sit down with the division so regardless what it is when heartland comes out which i do still think it's going to be a division game because the mechanics for the division seem to work really well for what ubisoft wants to create with their games So as far as what people were saying with what they want with this game, you're going to have, let's say you have your dark zone, you have your extracting gear, maybe it has a type of Tarkov feel, so they could pull people from that genre, and it has a battle royale feel, so they'll, they'll mix it up and pull people who like the battle royale feeling, and maybe you're there with a character that you're building up, you're getting your character stronger in, in this game, while it's an entire, uh, you know, open world PVP setting. It might be enjoyable. It won't be a military tactical shooter where 
you know, you could snipe somebody in the head and they, they go down. It's still right. going to have the division mechanics. But it is what it is at this point. I guess beggars can't be choosers. And I feel like that's like, this is why I released a video the other day. I feel like the division heartland might be bad news for Ghost Recon fans because you're not going to get exactly what you want the division fans are going to get what they want because it's yeah. going to be catered to them because it's going to have the mechanics from that franchise. Yep. So also a huge shout fun. out before this thing goes way too high. Caleb Garner squad. How are you guys doing tonight? Sorry, I'm late. AKA stabby McStabs. Huge shout out to you in the chat. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat, man. I was keeping an eye on that. I was letting, I was letting G money finish his thought there because yeah, with, with, with the division, I would like them like if with this division uh, game that they're going to be coming out with. I think if 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 it, if it is true that this could appeal to the PvP fans of Ghost Recon, um, I wonder if maybe they can do some sort of like a hybrid. So you do kind of tank bullets, but not to the extent of like some of the enemies that are in the division, like some of these big bosses yeah. and stuff that we go up against in here in the, in the gameplay. Or you dump, you know, three, like this guy here on screen, you dump like three, four, five, six mags into him before he goes down, but maybe have it along the lines of basically our characters that, you know, can take maybe a mag or something of direct fire, their armor depletes, their health depletes, that kind of thing. So it's not quite as crazy with the bullet sponginess. I personally would be okay with that. I really don't want to be doing like full on crazy bullet sponge stuff against other players especially because their movement is going to be way higher than the, than the NPC movement that we have against these guys in here. But yeah. who knows? It'll definitely be interesting to see how that works out. Also, Quint Ahab, $10 super chat. Just a little thanks for all the great content you've been putting out. A-Squad, cheers. I wouldn't be doing the content that I got going on lately without the man G-Money. We've been playing a lot of Ghost Recon Wildlands, and honestly, I don't know what I would be playing if <laughs> I didn't have like some Ghost Recon Wildlands co-op. To be honest, I yeah, like even playing even the other night when we got the gameplay for the division, I would not have done that by myself. It just would not have been appealing to me. So, yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's been fun making some yeah, new content with Wildlands and uh, just kind of screwing around like we were playing the division the other night, just kind of screwing around in there something a little bit different, um, which but, we, we need to get that going again. We need to get back into the get another Wildlands stream. after yeah, this. Yep. Uh, Apollo Patriot, dude, A Squad Arma 3 community should help with the new Ghost Recon game. Think about it. I have seen so many cool things. Like, I personally don't play Arma 3 because it's just. Oof. That would. That just. I don't even know if my computer could run it that great. And not to mention, that would be like wrapping my head around a whole. No I mean, I've played a lot of DayZ, which is kind of on like a similar ground with like DayZ mod from the old Arma 2 days and stuff. But the amount of cool mods and the countless things that you can do in Arma, if they were to able to do that in Ghost Recon, and even maybe like we talked about before is enabling mods, Ghost Recon, the devs wouldn't even be required. Like, obviously, the base mechanics, make sure all that's right, and then open it up to the community. How, how good Ghost Recon Breakpoint could, should, would be if there was a way to mod it like it would be endless the amount of things that some of the community members would be able to think up and iterate into the game. So yeah, yeah that would definitely be something in the right direction. Um, I don't know if Ubisoft would ever enable mods in their games, but, but now I'd like to open this up not only to you, but to see what chat thinks moving back to heartland because we can sit here and hope and pray that, oh, you know, maybe they'll, it's Red Storm. It'll be a little bit more realistic. I really don't think it's going to be. I want to know what everybody thinks first. Is it definitely going to be a Battle Royale game? And if it is, what type of Battle Royale game is it going to be? Because I really do think with the way that Dark Zone works in The Division that it's going to have a type of Tarkov feel to it, to where you have to extract loot in order to level your character up. Do you think it'll be a, 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 a game where you go in and you're just constantly in that server or something like a, a Fortnite or Warzone or Tarkov where you go in, you do something, you go out, and then you restart it again? Like How, how does everybody think this is going to work? And how do you think they'll structure it the way the division plays? 
Uh, I think I'm, I mean, this is just my personal opinion, but with the way the dark zones work in like the division, the division two, where you have all of your gates, I guess you could say where you enter into the dark zone and you kind of yeah. have, um, I know in the division one, like you would go into that room and then you'd hit the airlock. And then once you were technically in the dark zone, that was, that was it with the dark exactly. zone two, they had that little bit of a buffer with like the drones and stuff that would kind of protect you for the first, you know, maybe 50, 50 yards or something. Yeah. As that was just like zone. when you were walking in or out. Right. But I think I, I personally would love to see an escape from Tarkov style system where you wouldn't necessarily have to. And, and this would be really against everybody that plays the division. If any of you guys are hardcore division fans, you're not going to like me hearing like, you don't want me to say this. I personally don't want the flare system to be a thing. <laughs> I personally, I talked to you about but that the other the, night. That's the biggest mechanic. Right. But I mean, the fact that like I have all of this loot and if I went into the dark zone and I took down NPCs or I gathered loot like stealthy and there's no other real players that knew I was there. And then I have to shoot up a flare and ring the dinner bell because it just pops up on somebody's <laughs> screen that says enemy, you know, somebody's extracting or whatever. And then the mini map starts flashing at that extraction point. Like, yeah, I feel as if, in in a style game like Heartland could be, that would be extremely frustrating. Yeah. So I almost like with the escape from Tarkov system, if you want to go throughout an entire session or raid or whatever you want to call it, stealthy, where you could get in at an infill, get all your stuff done and exfill with technically not even engaging anybody. You know, I think that would be a cool mechanic because then you're not just always having to fight. You yeah. can have those stealth, aka rat players as the escape from tarkov community likes to call them you know you have your chads and your rats um but those just multiple different play styles i would hate to see them kind of like pigeonhole or you know lock people into a very specific kind of play style in that because even in warzone you see the rats the people that like you know they they avoid conflicts they avoid stuff you know i'd hate to see them you know you have to go in there and loot up stuff and then you have to shoot up a flare and you're ringing the dinner bell but it is the division so. Well, maybe maybe they'll change that mechanic. It is Heartland, right? So maybe it doesn't make sense for a chopper to just fly it. Maybe it will take the type of Tarkov feeling to where you just have to get to a quote-unquote extraction point. But it is a division game, so I'm trying to figure out how they're going to how they're going to work this. What if it's what if we're completely wrong and it's it's more like an MMO? It's like a free to play MMO where you're you're going into this world, you're working alongside other agents, going rogue is still a possibility. Maybe you don't have to extract gear, maybe you could just acquire, uh, acquire it and level your guy up. Like maybe it's something like that. Yeah. I mean, who knows how they can develop this thing. Yeah, cuz if I, you if you think how the dark zones work, obviously with the Washington DC and the New York, the dark zones were like sectioned off areas of the city that were completely yeah. walled in if you look at the image that was shown for you know the division heartland it looked more rural so maybe it's not like a dark zone maybe it's just like an open area where you wouldn't necessarily have to have the same mechanics as the dark zone and then have it be a massive thing where it's like an like an mmo or something and you can work with other agents the possibility of them going rogue would be cool because even in the image you have over on the right hand side you see that flare you see the flare going up so whether you still would have to do that to extract or they literally just put that in there because that's you know a staple of the division and we haven't seen any in-depth gameplay details or anything of it you know who knows i personally would like to see an escape from tarkov style thing um before we yeah. go too much further here uh mag e says i have arrived all exclamation points let's effing go <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much to, to the five dollar super chat man appreciate it um but yeah what what I, i'm trying to see here with the chat um heartland let's see hotel 25 says i'm willing to bet the heartland is going to basically be full-on dark zone garbage 100 percent of the time that that's what that's what makes sense that's yeah. what that's what it feels that's what it feels like the direction they're going to go in if it's going to be a free-to-play quote-unquote battle royale how is it not going to be just one big pvp zone and one big pvp zone in the division is one big dark zone so right. you're going to assume it's going to operate with those types of mechanics yeah, and the other thing too is is have you did you see 
the gameplay and people are talking about it in chat about the day before. Yeah. Was the one that was like it was basically the zombie survival game that literally looked like they ripped off the division from Ubisoft. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like uh like, it's, if it was it's like a div- it's a it's a division slash I guess like you could say like days gone ish because it does have zombies where yeah. the division really doesn't. But yeah, I mean until like until I could get my hands on something where I'm actually playing it on my PC specs and you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too excited until I know it's something that's real. Right. So basically like stemming from that, what if Heartland was sort of that same thing, Ooh. but without zombies? Oh, well, I was saying, Ooh, because what if they brought in zombies? That'd be interesting. Cause you what do have, you do have up? all of the, like the, I can't even remember what it's called. Well, I guess, I guess they the wouldn't do that too. in the division. Yeah. Cause I mean, you already have rainbow six quarantine. And then yeah. you have all these other games and stuff like that. But even that concept of this heartland, a little bit more rural. And every, like I said, every time I see that image, I always think of Far Cry 5 with the water yeah. tower and the more rural environments and stuff. And we've never really seen a division game set in that kind of environment. It's always been yeah. super, you know, urban combat, a lot of close quarters inside of buildings and parking garages. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting having it more open. Yeah, and that, like even if it has it. the division mechanics, that would appeal more to, say, a Ghost Recon player, that you have more a little bit more open environments. Like for instance, you you can equip sniper rifles in the division, but it's mainly just for that damage that it does because you're not really most of the time at a range where a sniper rifle would be plausible, but it hits the hardest out of all your weapons. Especially like with the headshot multipliers and stuff that are built into the division snipers and stuff. But in a more open space, you know, are they, I don't even know how, does the, is there, is there bullet drop in the division? Uh, not really. But I also, you know, I want to say this because I know it is Heartland, but when we look at these mechanics of the, and specifically the cover system, I wouldn't doubt that regardless if it's an open area, there's going to be so much junk from area point A to point B True. for you to use, you know, the cover system. So I wouldn't expect it to be really, really open to where there's nothing there. Because we also have to remember the division has no crouch and it has no prone. Yeah. So, so even if it's heartland and it's, it seems like an open area, it could be an open area with no buildings, but there's going to be, you know, barrels of hay everywhere or, yeah. Yeah. or, you know, just a bunch of, a bunch of things for you to utilize the cover system. Yeah. That's interesting too, that you say that too, because that's something that I always think past. Like we were even talking about when we were playing the other night, it's like, you can crouch, but you have to stick yourself to cover to crouch. Yeah. Yep. Like you can't physically crouch when you're out in the open, you cannot go prone at all. I would like, like to see that. Hey, if red storm is going to change anything, I'd like to see that add a crouch yeah. and a prone to the game. It's a PVP game. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It'll definitely be interesting to see like with it, with, with it being in possibly more of a rural environment. But yeah, I think if you're going to have that and you're going to have any, any type of major PVP, I mean, obviously the dark zones have the same mechanics, you know, you can't crouch unless you go behind cover, but I feel as if, especially if you're going free to play, and there's going to be, as soon as people see that, oh, it's free to play, I'm going to check this out, that have yep. never played The Division. Yeah. And they're going to come in and realize, like, what? There's no crouch? Yeah. There's no prone? Like, you can't, You the only thing I can do is, like, crouch behind cover? Yeah. And I think even some people, that might even be a big turnoff. So That's going to be a turnoff, it's even to FPS players. Yeah. Because even though you can't see your character do it, you can get down. When you're playing, you know, these first person games. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. on like on that note, well, being the fact that it is going to be free to play, obviously, you know, you have to have microtransactions to make money on a free to play game. And if you actually, I'm trying to remember who it was that I saw. I think it was EA. I think it was EA. I saw a post from them earlier that 80... I think it was 82% or 78%, something like that, right around 80% of their revenue in the last year was specifically microtransactions. Well, of course. Why do you think Ubisoft is doing this? 
Right. Like them moving <laughs> moving to this so called free to play model. Yep. And they did say in the article that they're they're they are kind of testing the waters. They're kind of, you know, just dipping their one foot in to see if this is sustainable and it and it works. And then at that point I would not be surprised if you see you know pvp modes or even just all of these big games releasing as a free-to-play model with just mad mad microtransactions you know even with the success but see that's the thing is when you have the success of assassin's creed you, like there are microtransactions and then with the dlcs and stuff like that but how could you pass up the opportunity to charge 60 dollars for that game like are they still going to do that like, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a math thing where you can milk more money over way more people entering the game because it's free to play, so they're going to check it out, hoping that you hook them and get them to purchase something. They're probably looking at all these numbers. Like you said, EA, look at, look at Epic. Epic has basically risen to the top because of just them selling skins mm -hmm. so i will Ubisoft, hand it to them with the fortnite model yeah it, with the, it, the it, amount it, of it, like unique skins and like yep. predator skins and rambo and out. just yeah like everything you could possibly imagine in pop culture has had a skin like master chief and lara croft have been in fortnite or yep. they might even be like, it's more recent but like you don't necessarily have to limit like the division. You don't have to li limit it to Ubisoft skins like we talked about. If there was some sort of a, a BR game where they could oh, literally yeah, well, put every Ubisoft skin that's ever been in any Ubisoft game ever, throw in, see, you know, Ubisoft, talk to Microsoft, throw Master Chief in there, throw. Dude, you just know, look at what Ghost Recon's doing with Tomb Raider. Right. It, it'll, it'll get, it will get done. And the only thing that kind of scares me is that will it, not only be skins because ubisoft is the king of cosmetics mm -hmm. whether you're playing the division whether you're playing ghost recon it's cosmetic city so yeah. if they get to the point where hey this is a free-to-play game but if you want to look cool hey this is five bucks this is five bucks and before you know it you have an entire audience who's playing a free-to-play game buying the cool helmet the cool jacket the cool <laughs> pants guilty as charged Right. If, so, if, hey, if they throw a G three combat shirt in the store for this division free to play, you you know you know I'm buying it. <laughs> and I, and I'm sure they will. They they're probably going to expand it tenfold because this is how they're going to get as much money as possible and milk it for all it's worth. It has yeah. to be, especially for third person. Right. You want you're playing a third person game. You want to look awesome because you could see your character. Right. So which I, which I still always blows my mind with Call of Duty. The yeah. amount of skins and operator skins that they sell, and, and it's a first it. and it's a first person game. You can't see nothing except maybe your character's gloves and like halfway up their sleeve. That's why I never understood that with Call of Duty. Like if you're gonna, if you're know. gonna do cosmetics for Call of Duty, go crazy with weapon camos, and then like Modern Warfare Remastered, in my opinion, did it the best with the um, they had something in there called weapon kits. So, like, you took your base M4 and you could put a weapon kit on it that made it look completely different, but it was still an M4. And they had, like, eight, nine, ten different weapon kits for each weapon, so each one of those made the weapon look completely different. Yeah. Because in a first-person shooter, what do you see? The only thing you see is your weapon. Obviously, with the Division and Ghost Recon and stuff like that, the, the, the cosmetics that you could put in there is endless because it's third-person, you know, helmets you know, jackets and pants. And even with the division, the way the division works, where you have the shirt layer and the jacket layer, you know, you have those two extra layers of customization that you kind of don't have in Ghost Recon. So, yes, it probably will be absolutely filled with microtransactions, but of course, to counter that to the guy that was even in my comment section, you don't have to buy them. Yeah, as, as long as, as lo it's not pay to win. Correct. I was as just about as, to yes. say that. As long as yeah. everything they have is strictly cosmetic, that's fine. Like, you yeah. cannot put, like, weapon variations in there that have different stats. That, Level that is a That is an absolute recipe for disaster. Yeah. So if you keep it, even if it's weapons, even if it's weapons, like, for instance, all right, there's this super cool weapon variant that has the exact same stats as mine, it just looks different. 
or it has like a ghillie wrap on it like you know with like the different weapons like in breakpoint how we had that the the survival sniper that had like the ghillie wrap and stuff on it different variations like that cool that's fine but you yeah. cannot be going in and having stat changing gear and stat changing weapons as microtransaction or oof people were upset enough at the start of breakpoint with the boosters you know mm-hmm. ubisoft felt the full wrath of the ghost recon community with that one so uh, let's see anything here in the chat some people were talking about i'm trying to remember there was one up here that i saw that i missed um uh would you uh jonathan's would you like to see something similar to the dark zone in the free to play um yeah well i mean i don't think so i don't think it's so much w- what i'd like to see it I, I think that's what it's going to be true true it, there, there's there's i'm trying to wrap my head around how the division puts out a game that's free to play it's obviously going to be a quote-unquote battle royale or just large-scale pvp so it has to it has to at least feel similar to what the dark zone is in the division one and the division two so i mean unless they're going to try to reinvent it which i don't think they will because this is the division right. so it'll be the division heartland a free-to-play game battle royale yada 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 and we'll see how the mechanics work how you build your character out how pvp works etc cetera, etc cetera. now do you think uh with you know obviously how the dark zones work in the division one and the division two with this new free-to-play game that everyone thinks is going to be a br do you have it packed full of npcs as well yes because that's how that's what the division is right and i wouldn't doubt the reason why i said it might even represent an mmo is because in the division as it is right now you go into the dark zone, it's just the dark zone. You kill some high-level NPCs, you kill a f- couple players, you extract your loot, boom. Now you have that for the PvE portion of the game, and if you come back into the dark zone. I would like to actually see where it's an entire dark zone, but I can get three other players, or however it's going to be, if it's going to still be squads of four, and there are actually instanced areas where we can go into and do a quote-unquote mission. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying I wonder if they'll try to structure it almost like an MMO where there's still almost a game to this and it's not just, you know, a war zone battle royale. You just drop in, fight, and that's it. Yeah. So, I mean, I I don't know. I'm leaning more towards it's going to be just one big, huge dark zone. So it'll it'll bring in some battle royale players, some Tarkov people might like it. Maybe not because it's still looter shooter with, you know, gear stats and everything so people might not like that yeah. but we'll see uh real quick cerberus in the chat i have no idea what currency that is ca um but uh, two... i think that's i think that's canada let's see okay two, yeah two, i think two, canada yeah two dollars and 79 cerberus says, what do you think the new update is going to be coming to the division two um I, i'll be honest i don't have a clue i'm not really in tuned with the division um, mechanics yeah i didn't even, i didn't even real i didn't even realize it was getting a new update is that it's getting a new update yeah tacked the, so, on to to warlords so the the timeline from what i saw was the division heartland was supposed to come out and then in a, another dlc or some sort of an update for the division 2's core game and then i believe after that was the release of the mobile game so there was more content coming to the division two which is i'm assuming what the update he's talking about i don't know he's Um, he's not he's not talking about heartland did he just pop in no he's talking about because they did confirm in all that news with like the movie and the mobile game and the heartland announcement that there was going to be more updates coming to the division two like its core game okay because this this is this is what i saw right there's the division one came out the division two came out the Division 2 Warlords of New York. Then the next step from that is the Division Heartland. What's so after the, that? Then after that is Division 2 new content. There you go. Then after that is the Division Mobile. Right. Then he's after he's, that is he's talking novel. about the Division 2 new content. Oh, well, I mean, that you know how far out that's going to be? If Heartland's coming out the next year, we're looking You're at You're probably Division talking two. at least summer to fall of 2022. Yeah. It realistically or spring depending on when they yep, get heartland 2023 out. yep so 
I don't know. And this I'm is, not, this I'm is not, what I would I'm definitely so say upset. that's more of a question for you because you've played like the Warlords of New York. You've played a little bit more. I have not honestly when when we played the division here, this is like the first time I've played the division in probably a year, at least a year. So I honestly have no idea what what the new content would be coming to the division. No, that's what uh, I haven't heard of anything. We got the we got the Resident Evil. Um, Maybe another year. Lara Croft crossover in the division. We, <laughs> I don't know about that. He's gonna come. It was, it was, it was the Resident Evil and... <laughs> in DC in some of the museums. You gonna pop up into museums? <laughs> do, do some get some Lara Croft booty shorts on my character. There you go. But yeah, outside of Heartland, I you know, I don't know. Maybe there'll be a little update here and there. I, I haven't heard of anything, but this is what gets. This is what makes me angry as a Ghost Recon fan. This, this um. I guess timeline of what we're seeing with the division, like this should have been Ghost Recon, man. Yeah. This is what we should have been getting with Ghost Recon. I mean, they're they got a Netflix movie, a, a Netflix film or whatever. It's coming out with a novel. Then it's getting a mobile uh version, maybe of Heartland. That if Heartland is successful, they'll they'll put it on mobile. You know, and and we're sitting here as Ghost Recon fans, like, damn, can yeah. can I get some some goodies like this? Yeah, that and would just, definitely be. It pains me. It pains yeah. me so much that Ubisoft Paris put out Breakpoint because that's that's basically the nail in the coffin as to why the division is now getting all of this. Yeah, because yeah, if and... Breakpoint would have hit a home run even more than Wildlands. Yep, this would be a completely you know, different story. Yeah, we might be getting a Ghost Recon, whatever Heartland yep. or who knows, a Ghost Recon, uh, Netflix m movie or whatever. So mm -hmm. you know, I'm 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 a little hurt, but like I said, I I do play the Division, so at the very least, I'll I'll explore this Heartland game. Hopefully, it's good and it'll be something to play. But yeah. I really, really am bitter over the fact. That Ghost Recon is nowhere to be seen yep. or anything here. I, I feel your pain. Uh, real, and... <laughs> real quick in the chat, I, I'm dying. I like keep muting my mic because I'm dying laughing. So Aaron Donovan, imagine it just being like a bird's eye view style perspective game where you control four characters in a turn-based game. If they oh. do that, I'll rampage. Uh, and then Hotel 2-5 to tack onto that. Oh my God, turn-based action. I would vomit uncontrollably. Dude, that cross when people were like trying to spit ideas of what this could be, and I was like, almost, dude, almost like imagine, imagine would, it being that, like hey, like a turn based, be crazy. Like what's what's the what's that what's uh, like Command and Conquer? What's like the term for that? Well, that's an RTS. R D yeah, real time strategy. Imagine so, so it was something so like turn based. But yeah, but like I'm thinking more. Oof. I'm thinking more of full spectrum <laughs> warrior. Could wait, you wait. imagine? Because nah, they did they say that. that like this like new perspective so when they that was i believe in the article it was like a new perspective i couldn't imagine it being Oof. something like that oh i mean talk about complete and utter disappointment hmm. yeah yes and, uh, Ross, the division Ross. is getting a movie and uh, that's the timeline that was given when heartland was uh discussed yeah and that's actually is uh, they're working what you said was working with netflix and i swear that movie leaked shortly after the release of the division one it's been in works that long because i remember back then the first name that came out was jake gyllenhaal was supposed to play like the main male uh. protagonist because it was back around the time that he did like jarhead and all that stuff like it has been in the works for what five years now at least so it well, could we'll be see. i mean it could be good i mean obviously we'll hey if 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 anything can bring more recognition to the Clancy universe and get more people involved in Clancy, it, it, it might not be a win-win because we might not be getting the Clancy games we want, i.e. a Division game or a Rainbow Six Quarantine where the games are so far gone that they're not the games that we imagine them to be anymore. So yeah. but I got to have a little a little hope that... Well, what's what's the movie that just came out with Michael B. Jordan? Oh, it was a, without the remorse Amazon movie. Tom yeah, Clancy's so they're, without they're, remorse. You know, there's that. Then, I have not watched that yet. It looked neither. like it would Me be neither. good, I have to but watch like, 
See, the thing that got me when they showed the preview, or I saw a trailer for that or something on TV when we were watching TV one night, there was a, a split second in there where it had, like, between scenes, like, it went from one scene to another scene, but the transition was the Sam Fisher night vision goggle sound. And I was like, yo, you, you are not doing that. Like, is this supposed to, like, some sort of be a Sam Fisher thing? Like, this, you, just, <laughs> I don't know. You give me some like, give me some CGI and like take redo it with Michael Ironside from the eighties. <laughs> I don't even know if that'd be possible. Um, but let me scroll back up because there was a couple things. Uh, Bryce, uh, or no, Anthony Sibilia. I said might be controversial, but I would love a division game if there was no bullet sponging enemies and more of a focus on realism. I I understand the divisions built from the ground up like that, but I would love to see a uh what was it like in like the, yeah, how they did it with breakpoint you can't do that yeah that would be it would go you against everything the division that. is built on yeah it would be the, cool though it would be cool in an urban environment to have it's something like, like that it's like but, a it's like a call of duty player saying yo dude i want destiny to play like call of duty it just that's just not gonna happen yeah the the, the division is a looter shooter it's based off of getting gear shooting enemies that have large health pools and that's just the way the game is and that's why it made no sense for ghost recon to turn into what it was with breakpoint 100 percent. so keep them separate they are yeah. their own thing that's why ghost recon failed yep they thought because of the success of the division two they could iterate that in ghost recon and make it be up beyond what yeah. they thought they it were, would and they it, were, it they was were tone deaf 100 percent uh, Caleb Garner, aka Stabby McStabs, uh, ten dollar super chat. Thank you so much, sir. Um, says the ranging bullet drop and compensation system from Battlefield Four combine the clothing and cover system of the Division Two Breakpoint gameplay mechanics of Wildlands and Breakpoint combined, then a bomb plot. Hire this man, Ubisoft. Uh, yeah, hire I, this man. I, I don't know if. I don't know if if it's Anvil next, but can Ubisoft put that type of range in their games? Yeah. Or do they just refuse to? Like, I don't know how it works, but I know Battlefield 4, you could snipe someone from far. Yeah. And see, that's so, the thing is like... But but yeah, I mean... Is yeah, it, yeah that that's nice. the big question. I think we've even talked about that multiple times. Is Is Ghost Recon being limited in the way that we like, you know, the, like yes. you were talking about the player Probably. base, us older it's, players, it is it to. being limited by the engine? Is that why we know. don't get to have, you know, the mechanics of other games, like even escape from Tarkov, like yeah. built on unity. Yeah. yeah it was right? built on unity. I think they did port like, what is it? The newer version of unity or unity two or whatever it is. They well, did. Whatever. Recently. If it's unity, it's unity. The point. But yeah. Is like that... the core system is unity. Yes. It is a first person game, but like if, if they were able to do that, what that game is with the ballistics and the range and the weather and the graphics and the guns and the whole nine, if they were able to do that in unity, like why don't they at least, this I don't is, know, this man. Is, this is a I'm, I'm, it's a broken record, but at that point, yeah, shift really. Ghost Recon over to Snowdrop because the Snowdrop is more than capable. Yeah, but you know what? This is what scares me, right? When you look at their yearly report, right, and you look at this the failure of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, we are going to be lucky if we get another Ghost Recon. Period. Let alone Ubisoft saying, "Okay, Breaking we're gonna shift. <laughs> we're we're, <laughs> we're gonna shift all of this over to Snowdrop now, and the one team that's been working on Ghost Recon the most is gonna have to relearn, a, you know, a, a learn an entire new engine." I mean, it, it's true though. Listen to this. Listen to this earnings report, right? So, record performance for Assassin's Creed, revenue up to fifty percent spectacular growth of just dance they name drop just dance okay so to, just to give people a perspective all the ghost recon fans out there rainbow six one of the industry's top 10 most played games in 2020 double digit player acquisition growth record viewership for esports regional leagues 
Didn't upcoming that release, release of in twenty fifteen. Yes, that was it's five. Yes. It's been out for five years and it's still pulling those numbers. Yes, one of the industry's top ten most played games in twenty twenty. Right, double digit player acquisition growth. So they're getting people now and retaining them. Upcoming release of Rainbow Six Quarantine to broaden audience reach. So they want to grow Rainbow Six. Right? What's next? The Division. 40 million unique players. Expansion of the universe with Heartland on console, PC, as well as mobile games. What's next? Robust growth for Brawlhalla. Far Cry. I don't even know or, what Brawlhalla uh, is. <laughs> it's like, like a Super is? Smash Brothers. Okay, okay. Which it's it could be a very appealing game to the general public. But, but the point is right. So this is this is what they're this is what they're discussing in their 2020 2021 earnings figures, right? So now we have robust growth for Brawlhalla, Far Cry, For Honor, Rabbids. I don't even know what that is. The Crew and Watch Dogs, right? So Solid ongoing sales through trends for Immortal Phoenix Rising, a player favorite new IP. Significant portfolio expansion to come. Avatar, Beyond Good and Evil uh, 2, Riders Republic, Skull and Bones, Star Wars. Do you want to know what's not next? Ghost Recon. It's not mentioned here. It is. It did say that it was. It is like one of their tentpole franchises. If you go up, up or down or whatever. But like, no, yeah, of course, no. That that was that was the article. So with all of those games that you right? just listed, so you do have Rainbow Six Quarantine, Far Cry Six that we talked about that's releasing within like the the fiscal window, and then you have, um, Beyond Good and Evil, the Star Wars that's in development. You know, you have those other games. Where does that put Ghost Recon? That's you know? my point. That's that's my point. With Ubisoft getting things like Star Wars, having all of these teams do certain things, and seeing, eh, you, you know, uh, dude, you you and me both, huge Splinter Cell fans. Where's Splinter oh. Cell, bro? Where's Splinter Cell? Chat, where's Splinter Cell? It's gone. So, yes, I'm very worried with the with their acquisition of Star Wars saying they're getting an avatar game, you know? Skull and Bones still on the way. The division the division getting pushed to the top of this third yep. person shooter ish ish type of 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 game. Like, yo, dude, it kind of worries me because if they so easily abandoned Sam Fisher, possibly their biggest icon out of all their IPs, uh, that I was don't of, da- I don't doubt that they could they could shelf Ghost Recon. Yeah, see, and that's the thing too is is that when you think about Splinter Cell, that was almost a completely different era of Ubisoft. Yep. Because you think, and, and there's a lot of people that even though um, Blacklist fundamentally was a good game, it was it was a really fun game. It was a good game, but the whole new voice actor thing, and even though like. A lot of people didn't know the fact that the reason behind why Michael Ironside wasn't the voice and the mocap because they wanted it to be combined, and obviously he couldn't do both. But you know that who knows? Like that that being gone as long as it has. So if if you put aside blacklist, when was the one before that? Like two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So you're talking blacklist. even if you go off a of blacklist was twenty twelve. Yeah, it was so 12, you're right? nearing a decade without Sam Fisher, which was a staple through the mm-hmm. 2000s, like the early 2000s, Sam Fisher was like the lead icon of Ubisoft. When you thought of Ubisoft, you thought of Sam Fisher. You thought of that night vision goggle sound, those, those three green lights. And now with obviously the division and these other games and, you know, with the addition that we've been, we, how long have we been waiting for skull and bones? I mean, they were building out the naval combat from Assassin's Creed three yeah. was the concept behind skull and bones so and then, now so so now imagine dude imagine 2022 passes imagine we get to 2023 and we're sitting there like yo what's going on and it's just division division or it's you know assassin's creed i wouldn't get too okay so then that scenario there i would panic i want to say wouldn't say panic but i would start getting a little uneasy if we got to e3 of 2023 with nothing if if we get if we close the drapes on e3 2023 well, well, and we see no before, ghost recon that's where before, i would be like oh okay what's going on 
let's let's look at it let's look at it like this if by the time right so we're going to finish year two probably let's say let's say spring 2022 right let's call that all of year two because year two came so late it's basically we didn't even get it yet so if by next summer we don't have any information on moa island or year three or if we get like if if we're just getting a little something something like that means okay they gave us a little something something now but we're still we still have no info on a timeline for what's going on meanwhile the division they laid out a timeline from heartland all the way to a netflix movie right mobile games novels uh, uh more content for division 2 we can barely we could barely get anything past you know what's going on now for we're getting Ghost two title updates yeah. two title updates in the next basically this calendar year and they couldn't they, all this time they they couldn't finagle a, a, a new dlc a solid right. dlc with with new content like a warlords or something so i don't know man and then you know when i look at the the sales of splinter cell and how you know really it didn't from the first one to the last it didn't really do much if these numbers are right that I'm reading here, so six million from from the first Splinter Cell, and then by the time Blacklist came out, it sold a little over two million. Yeah. So not only did the game not do well, people, you know, I guess the fans were just like, "Yo, this isn't Splinter Cell anymore." After yeah. Chaos Theory. Yeah, and, and I double, think double agent. Eh. The way I think a lot of with with combined with replacing Michael Ironside as the voice. And then also like that slow down gameplay of like the whole like John Wick yeah. style yeah, gameplay that was the, built into it. They made it more action. action yeah, oriented. that was like they thought they thought in, in in house they thought this is what the fans want. Yeah. How many people played Splinter Cell for that 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 stealth experience that no other game had? Mm -hmm. You know. So real quick before we continue, I got some super chats to get to real quick. Uh, Jonathan from probably like ten minutes ago. Uh, the tw Canadian, basically, let's call it $21, $20.99, says, here's a question. Will Heartland be next-gen exclusive with 4K 120 FPS, or are they going to pull a Cyberpunk? Honestly, Cyberpunk's scale, I think Division is more scalable, depending on okay, how, how big wait, the environment uh, is. Uh, are Jonathan, is Jonathan must be referring to console? Because well yeah like next gen exclusive so it would be Series X Series S PS5 PC uh, no mean, Xbox we, One no PS4 I, can we can we be completely honest nothing is pulling 4K 120 dude nothing you'd be lucky if you get 4K 60 clean yeah high set high yeah settings. I think on you got, on Series X you're getting no, I think they do they, have on, an update on, for on, the division on on console you're getting 60 frames. Uh, on the Series X, it could be 4K. It could on, be like upscaled on the, 4K. I think. Yeah, on, like, on the PS5, same thing. It'll be yeah. like 1440 ups checkerboard upscaled, whatever. So, and then PC is whatever you have, dude. Right. You could, you know, whatever settings you could use, but there, no one's gonna promise 4K 120 frames per second. That that's not gonna happen until next gen, not even this gen, because yeah. this gen is barely promising 4K 60 frames a second, unless you're getting a game like maybe Gran Turismo where i think yeah i think forza yeah like, yeah those kind of games are which are obviously are racing games so yeah you're going exactly. super fast you don't have to have super detailed stuff like your your textures at that are going to be blurry anyway you know so but and then also caleb garner stabby mcstab says hear me out incorporate the character movement system and medical system similar to metal gear solid on top of what we just said which at that point i'm not exactly sure what we were talking about because this was a few minutes ago as well. well well here's here's the thing garner the character movement well i think the character movement system in ghost recon breakpoint is probably one of the best character movement systems since metal gear solid it's very similar it has that rotating functional camera it has animations that transition into one another so smoothly and it has the artificial intelligence that lets you know if you're going over a rock or something like that so it, it's really it's for breakpoint i think it's really well done as far as pvp people have found some uh bugs or glitches or whatever you want to call it some ways to kind of cheese with the sprint system and moving around 
but I definitely do think Ubisoft was taking the character movements in the right direction. I know a lot of people would disagree. A lot of people like the locked on camera to the back, more like Wildlands. I don't not like that camera system. I just don't like it when I strafe from th nine to three o'clock that my characters always looks at 12. Yeah. That's my problem. Yeah. I liked it in, in um, Future Soldier, the way Redstorm did it, where when you moved to nine and three, the character still looked that way. And you could still kind of rotate it around, and it and it and they did it. They had a really good camera system in Future Soldier. Wildlands, eh? Breakpoints really well done in my opinion. But yeah. I, I hear you, dude. I do agree. I do agree with that. Um, and then Ko also Kojima is king. Kojima is king. Uh, also, Nigel King, uh, nine dollars and ninety nine cents super Nigel, chat says, "I up, appreciate bro? you, brothers. Appreciate appreciate the super chat, man." And sorry, I got behind on those. We were kind of we were kind of going on there, and I didn't want to break in. Um, but yeah, my big mouth. No. Um, and then kind of going back up to uh, Demar. Oh, wait, wait, Corey, G Money, I disagree brutally. Wait, with what? You disagree guys brutally. are. Uh, so you're talking about the animations for Breakpoint? When you guys chime in and chat, make sure you're specific. Yeah. I personally, like, after going, like, when you used to talk about that, like, in your videos and then when we played together, when you talked about liking the way the camera system worked in, in Breakpoint. I kind of understood what you were saying, but when we went back and started playing Wildlands, I was like, oh, this is atrocious. Because, like, what you're talking about is, like, when you strafe, your dude it, stays looking at 12 and, like, does the little, like, side hustle. Yeah, you know, it, looks, little... it, looks, it looks bad. It feels bad. Yeah. If you're going to keep the camera locked on the, on the back of the player, when you move 9 and 3, you at least have to have the character turn in those directions. Right, like, basically, like, how a uh, future soldier... Does that. Yes, exactly. Future Soldier is is a middle ground I'm willing to accept. Yeah. Because I'm old school, you know, I love the old Splinter Cell games, and that's what really gets me into that type of camera system to where you could move any direction and rotate the camera and the play and the, the character keeps moving any direction you, you put them. Yeah. Oh. Um and then going back, uh Damar Hall said, uh, do you think there will be cross play slash cross platform? For Heartland at launch, is there any Ubisoft game that's cross-platform? No. Uh, uh wait. If it was a BR, I think they would be smart to make it cross-platform. Whether or not they'll do it, you know, who knows? Yeah. No. Well, the camera system breakpoint and the cover system sucks. Well, I'm not. I didn't say anything about the cover system. Uh, the cover system is a little too sticky. But the camera system is uh I, I disagree. I think it's it's one of the it's one of the best since I guess I would put Future Soldier and Breakpoint as top tier and I would put Wildlands as bottom tier. Just running around strafing and the division too, the division does it too. I hate it. I, if I'm running to my nine o'clock and I'm just strafing looking forward, it just feels bad. Yeah. Yeah, and the Corp thing you guys the thing you guys see in the gameplay a lot, like that you guys are watching too, is that I don't like is the how sticky the cover is. It just ugh. Yeah. The amount of buttons that I'm trying to press to like pull my dudes off the cover, like, and it's just you do just simply if you tap control, I believe, or tap space bar, he comes right off the cover. But it's like when I'm trying to like move left, move right, and try to pull myself off the cover, and he like wraps around the corner, stick into the cover. It's just like, dude, get off the cover. I want to keep going. <laughs> But that's yeah, where, like, with the Wildlands cover system, with it, it, it's it is like it's a soft cover. I like the way the Wildlands or the like basically the breakpoint works. So, yeah, breakpoint breakpoint's a little too sticky, and the animation where he smacks his head into the wall every time you go up against the wall is a, a little too much. Yeah, but like Corvacho said, it, 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 I think compared to Wildlands, they were moving in the right direction as far as animations go and, and the way the camera system was working with rotating around the character or whatnot. So Garner again, want to read that off? Oh, I got you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I mean like high ready, low ready, being able to roll to one side while, pr Oh yes. Yes. Garner. There are things that are missing from ghost recon, uh, dive behind cover in addition like your heart rate affecting your accuracy the camouflage yes dude i i understand what you're saying there that'd be cool can you please do some future soldier gameplay someday so we can remember the old days we got the next get one the next one the next the tactical round table 
true. We try to do it. We try to also do uh, to play it. We were thinking about live streaming it, but Future Soldier crashes on on Ubisoft Connect, man. Even the division, like we were having issues with, like that little segment you guys saw just a second ago, where G Money just like went down and he was just stuck there. It's when his game crashed. And I've been even having difficult times recording the division two because it keeps crashing. And I know there was somebody in chat a little bit ago that was talking about like he would love to play the division two, but it keeps crashing on his PC. That is yeah. a huge like I'm having the same problem. Like these the I think the longest segment of gameplay, I didn't we we played for about two hours um and didn't have any crashes other than that one that G had. But yeah, there for a little while I was having it where I would be lucky if I got twenty five minutes of gameplay without it crashing. Yeah. So, and future soldier on PC is worse. Like I can't yeah, tell I mean, you how many times well, like I won't even get through the briefing cutscene of the mission and it'll crash. It'll go awful. over and over and over again. And it just keeps crashing. I do have like the first half of the campaign recorded. Like most of them are up on YouTube. I think some of them might not, I might not have got them all up on YouTube, but I do have like the first half of the campaign that maybe, and we do also like, for instance, we're talking a lot about the division stuff tonight. So we do have division gameplay going in the background, but you know, with, with another one, maybe the next one, um, we can, that we're going to be doing, which I believe we are going to be doing another one next week. Just throwing that out there. Another tactical round table next week. Um, that's all I'm going to say. But we could definitely throw some future soldier gameplay in there because I, I personally oh, oh. might even get caught up in watching it. Yeah. Okay. I might even get caught up in watching it because the future soldier campaign, yes, it was linear, but it was a fantastic campaign. It didn't need to be open world. And even at that time, I don't even know if they could have done an open world game. That was in like that developed from like 2009 to 2012. So that was like a 360 PS3 game. So, well, with the gr with the graphics they wanted, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, that would have definitely been. Um, and then Aaron Donovan, Red Storm can't do a worse job than what UB did with Breakpoint, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my assumption on what's going on right now. There's no way that what's coming out within the next year is getting done just by Red Storm right now. So Massive definitely was holding the reins of this game. And then when Lucas Games and Ubisoft came together to make Star Wars and Massive Entertainment was chosen as the development company to do it, I don't doubt that they started right away on getting, getting into the Star Wars game and Red Storm Entertainment took the reins of what is now going to be the Division Heartland. Yeah. So, you know, all of these companies, they work together how Ubisoft works as an umbrella. They have all the teams working on different things at different times. So well, you never know. We'll see what happens with what this game comes out. Even yeah. if even if Red Storm is is the development development name behind it right now, I'm sure that a lot of other teams are helping out. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb Garner coming in with another super chat, another five dollar super chat. I appreciate it, man. Um, if I had the know-how and the resources that some of these AAA studios had, oh my God, I would create a monster game, LMFAO. See, that's the thing, is like, because like it's a corp, it's a corporate, it's a corporate company. They're in it to make money. They're not like I, I don't want to sound like a dick, like to the, like a, directing this towards the developers. I don't want to sound like a dick when I say this, but you guys are in it to make money. It's a business. You could honestly, I wouldn't say care less because I know a lot of the community managers, they do care. The devs do care, but you know, the devs answer to the corporates. All the corporates want is they want to make money. You they, want, could, yeah. they could care less of how they make money. They just want to make money, you know? So, Hey, if, if my crypto, if the crypto that I have goes through the roof, maybe, uh, maybe we'll make a third person tactical shooter, you know, maybe do that. If we're going to do it though, we're going to do it on unreal engine five. I still don't understand you why. To, unless you want to hire people to. to yeah, I to... wouldn't. I wouldn't do it myself. There's no way. I'd just fund it. <laughs> well, yeah, you'd have to fund it anyway. But the thing is, is that if you don't use Unreal or something like that, that you have to fund two, three, four years of just hardcore programmers making your engine. Yeah. See, I wouldn't do that. Unreal Engine is like, and I've talked about this. I've even tweeted this out on Twitter before. I said, I mean, look at what the Coalition did with Gears Five. It's, it's, I wouldn't call it, it's not a tactical shooter, but it is a third person shooter. 
yeah. built an Unreal Engine, and that yeah. game was running 4K60 on the Xbox One X. Like I don't know how they did it, but they got they got the Xbox One X to run 4K60, a locked 4K60, with Gears 5. And then they just announced, was it yesterday, I think? Yesterday or the day before? They announced that they're porting basically everything moving forward. They're basically moving over to Unreal Engine 5. And they yeah. also did say that they are working on multiple projects. And I've even said this multiple times. I would love to see the Coalition make a third-person realism, you know, tactical shooter. It wouldn't a military shooter, which I think they could do it, but would they do it? You know, is that something that Microsoft would want to fund, like a, mm. a military shooter? Like the, you don't see many of those. Dude, we look that we all we have to understand. We might have to recognize, and when I say we, not just not just you know us, everyone in chat or everyone out there. Yo, we might be the odd people out yeah maybe people maybe the masses just don't want this type of game and we're wrong and, I, and I, to tack on to that i will say it's um plat more platform specific because the poll that i did talking about the mods the majority of people are playing on console you know, you, you, a lot of console, not, not, not speaking towards anybody in the chat if you're playing on console, but a lot of the console players want a more arcade experience. Yeah. You get like Escape from Tarkov, Arma, DayZ, like even DayZ, DayZ runs great on console. I've played DayZ on Xbox and it runs great. It's fun. And they figured out a way to map it so that you can do everything in DayZ on a controller, you know? But when it comes to those games like Escape from Tarkov, that I would qualify that as like a niche style game, there's thousands and thousands of people that play it. But do you take a triple A developer and make a game like that that would be like hoping to appeal to the masses? Because I don't well, know if it would. Well, here's here's some statistics for you. Now, Armor is not the most polished game. You know, it's basically developed by the modders, right? Right. But as of June 2019, the numbers we have for Arma, 5 million copies. That is probably just not enough for a lot of these studios who want to make billions. They don't want to make millions anymore. They want to make billions. Yeah. Like that that's what it's all about. So if you can if you can make a game like Heartland, get it to be successful, get it on mobile to where the 12-year-old kid has his mom's credit card in the phone who could just purchase 50 million things. Like that's how all these mobile games make money. Make yeah. no doubt about it. It's not, it's not grown adults spend. I mean, obviously grown adults do too. They spend a lot of money on these things, but you know, a lot of the time it's just kids who have access to the cards on these iPhones or whatever. And they just buy into Roblox, just constantly. Purchasing <laughs> stuff. Shout out you to know? Carbon Meister. <laughs> with so, the roblox with the with, with the roblox channel yeah um, um but, so it's like, it's like yo th this is this is what they're looking at they're looking at getting and that they're looking at creating these games so that they can transport them to mobile because that's yeah. when you look at the division timeline boom the next thing to come is a mobile game for if this heartland thing does well yeah um, Caleb Garner in the super chat with a $20 super chat. My Lord, dude, um, says a squad. Tell me right now that you wouldn't buy a game that I just described in the last three super chats, that whole thing in one game and they can make money off the cosmetic MTX system. Everybody wins. Oh, for sure. Yo, if, if everything what? that we just talked about, if they would just sandwich that into one game and release it hundred percent, I'd pay, I'd pay double price for it. I'd pay a hundred, I'd pay a hundred something dollars for it because okay. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good. Well, I'm just you, saying is this, if it was built out, all, if it was built out the way that we described it. Of course, of course. But we do have to understand that you could have the best ideas in the world and the game could still play like shit. Yep. So 100%. this is why a lot of us are kind of on edge with what happened with Ghost Recon, because we recognize that, yo, there is some talent 
over at Ubisoft and, and Paris and Red Storm and Massive, these guys, they're talented devs and they shouldn't be held back by people telling them, well, you know, we want robots and gear score and this and that. Yeah. Well, there was a huge disconnect with communication uh, when it came to that game. Um, and then less of a dying breed. Yep. Uh, executioner real quick. A squad. If Ubisoft does make heartland cross play, I think it should be console to console versus, uh, versus console just because there's too many issues on PC with cheating and glitches. See, that's the thing too is, is even with Warzone, I feel as if you're going to do cross platform, your matchmaking should be input based. That's my personal opinion because whether you're on console or whether you're on PC, if you're playing on PC with a with a controller, you should match with other players that are using a controller, whether it be on console or PC. If you're one of those players that hooks up your mouse and keyboard to your console, you should be matching against other players that are doing that same thing on console or being against PC players. Because I'll be straight, I love playing games on PC with mouse and keyboard. I also am a big fan of playing Call of Duty on controller and when you turn on the matchmaking and you're going up even against other like i've even done it where i turned crossplay off and then i'm playing against all these dudes that are using mouse and keyboards on their xbox like i don't i don't want to play against people playing on mouse and keyboard you know so who knows who knows if it's going to be crossplay anyway because i don't really think there's a whole lot of other games like the division isn't currently the ghost recon i know there was rumors of ghost recon going crossplay cross-platform but um and then like you were saying nigel king saying that last of a dying breed it could be you know you think back to og ghost recon og rainbow six you know even like the first iterations of arma like that was years and years and years ago and then even like i'm looking at real quick on my phone like the stats for escape from tarkov um and this might not be quite up to date but the game hit its peak of concurrent players like um right after one of their big massive updates was 200,000 players. So 200,000 concurrent players, but it was right after an update. And then if you compare that, if you've been like, if you told that to Ubisoft or whatever, like, Hey, you know, 200,000 players, they would laugh in your face because mm -hmm. that needs to be, that needs to be millions of concurrent players. You need to have millions of players on your game to make money, you know? So like, maybe we are, you know, maybe we are the, the dying breed, you know, but like when you think back to that though is when you put something on console that is like a PC centric game, DayZ for instance, and and like that game runs great on console and there's thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not more people that play DayZ on console. You don't have your mods and stuff like you do on PC, at least that I'm aware of, but it's a fun game and it runs smooth on console. You know, I know a bunch of people that picked it up because they ported it to console because they had no intentions of ever getting a gaming PC to run it. Why can't we do that with Escape from Tarkov? Arma. Arma would be tricky to do on a controller. That might be basically impossible yeah, no, to do yeah, on a controller. There's too many keybinds for Arma. But to, to be on Escape console. from Tarkov, yeah, it'd probably be about the same way. There's a lot of keybinds yeah. in there with the healing mechanics and everything. But just do it. Do it and be like in, in the in the in the specifications, just say requires mouse and keyboard. And make it so that it works. I know that's easy for me to say, but, you know, for those people that have gaming PCs, you wouldn't need it ported to console. So, Sorry, later, brother. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Um, and it was a super chat here. Uh, scroll back up. The Alien HD Gaming. Bohemia could make a good tax shooter since Arma did good. Also, I love the hell out of the Arma franchises. They could. And you can already see that they ported DayZ to console. And it runs great on console. They get updates just like the PC stuff. You know, so like it's possible. I don't know if I would choose Bohemia to do it though, because obviously we know how long DayZ has been in development. DayZ released like almost a decade ago. Uh, you as know well. what? Yeah, I don't think these guys but, they they don't really. I don't feel. I feel like they don't really work hardcore on these things. They they expect the mod community to do most of the legwork. Yeah. Because everything that comes out for Arma is just a mod. Yeah, I will say too is like I have not played vanilla DayZ. In a long time. Like when you play modded DayZ, it's a whole nother game. With yeah. the way like the base building mechanics and all of the extra base building things that you can use to build like these really cool massive bases. 
and the different guns. Because, like, let's be honest, the vanilla guns in DayZ, it ain't it. Like, there's, there is some kind of cool guns. But when you have, you know, like the, the 408 Chaytech intervention sniper rifles and the Barrett 50 cals and, like, the ACR and all these other weapons in the game and all these different mods for those weapons in the game that you can find, that makes it fun. You know, vanilla Daisy, it's still fun, but modded Daisy is way better. Same thing with Arma. How many people do you know that actually play vanilla Arma? No, I wouldn't. I would definitely say that not that many people would play vanilla Arma. Yeah. All the modded, the way, the, the, the countless things that you can do. Some of them dudes are super talented with the mods and stuff that they make. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I'm. That's what we like. Going back to it, open it up to the mods. Like what the community could do. But a lot of those are like more of your indie studios that do that. I don't know if a triple A studio would open up their code to, to, to mod, you know, because ghost recon breakpoint, if that you were able to mod it, just imagine what you could, what, what people could do. Yeah. Like not just like, not just like character customization and weapons and stuff like full blown mechanics, like different map, different locations, different, you know, different everything that they could do in there different AI that they could put in there, you know, but I just don't know if Ubisoft would be open to opening up the code for, for people yeah, to mod and stuff like that. I don't think so. If they weren't going to, if they're not going to do it for breakpoint, well, you know, like they're not going to do it for one of their titles that are super successful, like AC or anything else, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, execu- and- oh, real quick. Yeah, Executioner yeah, yeah, yeah. says, uh, a squad, if I'm correct, I think rainbow six siege is, um, planning on adding cross platform in the next season or two, which well, I mean, well, hell, at this yeah, point, the game's been out. The on. game's been out for six years. I mean, at this point, why not? Yeah, not only that, for Heartland as well. The reason the reason you play is gone and it's Ubisoft Connect is because they they are going cross platform. So I would ex- I would expect moving forward, at the very least, PlayStation and Xbox can play together and things like that. So we'll see. Yeah, which I mean, if you do that, you know, you're you're finding lobbies and your player base just goes up exponentially. Yeah. If you're able to put all those players in the same pool, like for matchmaking mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So um Demar Hall uh played the new DLC from Arma where you go to Vietnam. I have not. I have not played Arma and I I haven't played Arma in like a long, long time. That yeah, game I mean like that's even with Escape overrated. from Tarkov now, I I almost prefer to watch people play more than actually playing it myself arkoff is fun man i just scooped it up on sale yeah that's a fun game but like i can get lost with people like if i get into like there's a guy that i watch stream escape from tarkov um his name is deadly slob um and he streams it over on twitch and we're like so far into a wipe where like they wipe your stash and wipe your gear and everybody starts yeah. from like they start all over well yeah. it's been so long since they did a wipe that what he does is he basically resets his account and then he does it like hardcore Tarkov. So oh, that's he, cool. He basically makes it so that he can't go and actually buy anything from the vendors because all the vendors have barters where you can get different items and then trade those items for items from them instead of actually using like in-game currency to buy the items. So he can only find stuff in raid and then he can only barter with the traders. He can't physically buy things from the traders. Yeah. And he also can't insure any of his gear. So if he goes in and dies, he loses it all. It doesn't come back in an insurance, how the insurance system works in that game. So it's, it's super hardcore. Like I, there's no way I could play that game like that, but like watching him play on his normal account where like he doesn't care because he's got so much money and so much loot and he can just buy everything back compared to how you would have to play it in like a hardcore playthrough of that. It's just, you have to think about every engagement. You have to think about every little thing because you only have limited supplies. And if you die, everything's gone. That's on your character. So in that sense, I just love watching that style of escape from Tarkov. I enjoy, I still enjoy playing it, but if you even took half of the way that game works and put it into like a third person Ubisoft, whatever, you know, I think it would appeal to a larger player base, but. Well, we'll see because I don't know. I think Heartland, Heartland is going to have that type of ish system with its 
division mechanics. So we'll see if it can bring, I don't know, it might it may or may not bring the hardcore people over just for the simple fact that it's looter shooter with gear score and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So so you never know. But uh there was a, there was a uh something that was brought up in chat what are your thoughts on Battlefield 6 now that we're getting close to a reveal of Battlefield 6? That was actually, somebody was saying in here too, that it was actually confirmed today that their reveal got pushed back because it was supposed to happen in May. And now it is pretty much confirmed that the reveal is going to be in June, which the EA Play, I believe, is set for like mid to late July. So I think you're going to get a reveal trailer in June, the hype is going to build, and then you're going to get like a full in-depth breakdown at EA Play. I'm personally extremely excited. Obviously, it's a first-person game. It's not, a, it's not a tactical shooter, but if it's going back to modern combat and everything is pointing towards the fact that it's going to be just on a massive scale, like way bigger than any other Battlefield we've ever played, and with like the Levolution that was like you know, trademarked with the frostbite engine with they're taking that to an entire another, like another level that would be fantastic. I would be extremely excited about that. So what are your thoughts on ghost, uh, battlefield six? It's been a while since I've the, let's see the last battlefield I played was three. Ooh, you didn't it, play battlefield four. No. Wow. And it's been such a long time since I played battlefield. And since now, as trying to grow a YouTube channel and create content in this genre, but, you know, I also play things like, obviously, everyone knows, I just got done playing Returnal, which I loved. Uh, I play games like World of Warcraft, but, you know, if Battlefield drops and it looks something like it's not set in, you know, a future with jetpacks and something silly like that, I think I'll scoop it up and I'll enjoy a little PVP and go through the campaign because it, it's something new and moving forward, like I said before, beggars can't be choosers. I have to enjoy whatever I can at this point, knowing that Ghost Recon is kind of lackluster with the content and as far as something like the division heartland we'll probably get that sometime next year so you know if battlefield drops and it looks good i'll probably scoop it up how long i'll play it i don't know will i become hardcore pvp or i don't know i'm just getting into tarkov now so that seems kind of fun so i'll play it by ear it would be nice to to see how many people in my community scoop it up if they're on pc to join lobbies together that'll be fun join lobbies with other youtubers i think i heard bay z was gonna cop it so i think he wants i'm to definitely yeah i'm definitely gonna pick that up they, yeah because yeah, they, they you were said you were picking it up on uh what yeah, yeah. 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 i was it's gonna good. be picking it up on console yeah let's get so. some l's let's get some l's in chat l's in chat for a squad picking up battlefield on console see now now that's the thing though is what if they put something in battlefield six that was cross progression I, I would platform? buy it on both no like for instance oh, or, or oh, that, you're, oh, yeah. oh you're literally talking about that. they are okay. now well, that's the thing is why wouldn't they why well why, why wouldn't battlefield go into know. that and do cross platform like that would be a huge <laughs> j plays l <laughs> <laughs> no but like for instance like um oh, what was it i'm trying to remember what game it was or no halo halo is going to be that way is going to be like on PC and console, it's like the cross progression. So you could literally just move from Xbox to PC and all your progression carries over between the two. If Battlefield 6 was that way, because Call of Duty is that way now. Yeah. Call of Duty has the pro cross progression, no matter what system you're playing on, all your progress. Well, you know. hopefully we move towards that for all games. That'd be cool. The game is, if it's a third party game, you know, you should be able to. <laughs> Roughneck Big L. Do whatever Everybody's you want. saying L. <laughs> uh, oh, 26 quick. L and he has a console. <laughs> yeah, I have a console. He's saying L. Yeah. Yo, Maggie, thank you for the $5 super chat. Uh, a Squad G, have you guys had any luck getting a 3080? Not a chance. Well, I mean. If not, it, what GPUs are you guys running? Um, I'm still, still running the OG 1080. He's got and the I, 1080, but... I think but, G's got the 1080 Ti. 
No, no, I got the 1070 Ti. 1070 Ti, okay. Nike, you know, I, I'm unable to find it, but if you want to donate, you know, a few hundred dollars, <laughs> I might be able to pick one out my ass. I say somebody goes super crazy and drops a five five thousand dollar super chat, I'll pick up the 3090. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Nobody do that. Don't do that. But yeah, like the only way you're gonna get a 30, like even a 3070, 3070, 3080, 3090 is if you go to one of the like I buy power or NXT and NZXT and do a pre-built yeah. only way you're going to get one in 2021 yeah. unless you're extremely lucky and it's super overpriced. Yeah. And either way you're going to be paying, you're going to be paying a stock 3090 price for a 3080 or a yeah. stock 3080 price for a 3070 and all the other parts too. You're paying super right. over money. I'm talking about, thousands of dollars for a build that you should be able to put together for yeah. a lot less. Yeah, for like for instance, if I were to try to pick up a 3090, if I could somehow find a 3090 graphics card on its own right now, I would be paying more for the graphics card than I built my entire last PC that has the 1080 and the Ryzen, you know, everything in there because a 3090 is going for about $2500 right now which is a thousand above MSRP, which is just insane, to be honest. Like I even just for like, just for, just to know how much it would cost, I built like what I would want in a processor, you know, 30, like even went overkill, 32 gigs of RAM, RTX 3090 with a, um, what was it? A Ryzen 9 3950X, a CPU in there. And it was like $5,400, which is if it weren't for all the scalping and all the inflated prices, you could easily get that for probably 3,500 bucks, which yeah, it, no, I'd like to have a 3080 as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to pay that much of a markup for it right now. Yeah. I think honestly, unless I come into some money that's kind of out of nowhere that allows me to No, even then like the principal, like, Oh, spending, Oh man. I think by the time I'm ready to get a 30 series, the 40 series will be out. Yeah, this is. I don't even know. Uh, what is this? OG, OG two tone got a hater in here touching himself. What? God. <laughs> what? What did I miss? What did I miss? I'm trying to find out. I don't see it. Oh, okay. I was gonna give you that 5K, but if you don't want it, oh Ross. Oh, oh Ross. Oh, no, dude. I could never. I could never like accept that. Like I would. I would feel so guilty if somebody did that. Like. Yeah, Good I don't know. Have SB. Wait, have what? Should Heartland have skill-based matchmaking, yes or no? No. Oh, that's what that means? Skill-based no. matchmaking? Yeah. So basically you want a, like a ladder system. No, skill-based matchmaking. So like you're super duper. Like if you play in Call of Duty, and this is one thing I think is ruined Call of Duty. Like there's you cannot have, you can't go into Call of Duty and play for fun. Why? Because it because you're going up against people that like, for instance, me personally, I go super try hard every game. Like to me, winning and getting lots of kills is fun. And that's the only way for me to have fun in Call of Duty. Wait, so how do they do skill based matchmaking? Skill based matchmaking, like for instance, call it like how Call of Duty does it. So your they win. do like your kill death ratio. Everybody oh. that's in my lobbies have at least like a two kill death ratio. I don't oh. go against people that don't have hands. Like I don't go against those kind of players. Yeah. And people have like reverse boosted and like killed themselves in lobbies like a bunch of times like over and over and over again and they go up against like straight bots that yeah. these kids have no fingers and have like never played a call of duty game in their entire life like i don't want to play against those kind of kids anyway but i don't also want to have to try to like act like i'm trying to get on the pro scene every single game yeah to, to actually go you know positive so i don't i think there needs to be some skill-based matchmaking like there in, in pvp there always has to be skill-based matchmaking like even if it's super light but here's the thing or right? do a ranked system We're talking about the division right so i don't think you could make a skill-based matchmaking you would make a like a gear score matchmaking oh yeah those, yeah those those games are basically you know whoever's more powerful is going to win the fight not who gets the first shot who's lucky you know who's got the better skill it's basically you got the better gear and you melt people. Yeah. Well, it would be it would be something more like that. 
Oh, so he was saying that somebody was in here touching himself. He says someone said, get a job. <laughs> I do have a job. I work 40 plus hours a week at my main job. And then like my YouTube is just like a, I call it like my, my, my side hobby or my side hustle. It's just a fun hobby that I do. I don't, I don't do YouTube for the money. Quint, I do believe Heartland is going to be multiplayer only. Heartland, yeah. I, 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 being the fact that even if you just look at who's developing it, it's going to be a multiplayer specific mode. I don't yeah. think there's going to be a single player PVE aspect of it. I don't. Fox Direct's a really good. I mean, this, you could go in depth with this one, but what's your dream game? I mean, whoof. My dream You've game. You got all the resources you need to make it. Oof. I haven't thought that one out. I would have to. That would be tough. I would have to literally create the mechanics, create how it's going to just work. release GTA Six already. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, oh man. Something. If I could spit something out like extremely quick here, so open world tactical shooter with a linear style campaign. With all of the tactical tactics that we've talked about here with like the in-depth character customization, in-depth weapon customization to the level of like Escape from Tarkov. Tactical tactics. Like tact super tactical tactics. Like the tacticalist of tactics. But like all of that in a massive, beautiful open world that has insane like bases and stuff to take down. So if you just like let's just like throw it on top of Wildlands. A map like that, but super more, or like more, what's the word I'm looking for? Dense. Super yeah. dense when it comes to the stuff that's on the map. And then all of like the, the tactics and the animations and the gunplay that we've talked about with insane character customization, like icon skins and stuff that you can buy. Like People say they don't like microtransactions. If they release some dope skins, you'd buy them. You know? Yeah. All oh, of those yeah. things. And then on top of that, have a fantastic in-depth pvp system on the side so that you if you wanted to go get lost in pvp you could go get lost in pvp yeah extreme replay value i have so i have so many videos where i discuss for instance let's take ghost recon or a third person tactical shooter but let's give it a better ballistic system, a suppression, uh, a suppression system that sounds more realistic, uh, a, a better gore system, uh, like A Squad Dude, said. That what, have... what you just said. Why is there no gore? Yeah. Like I want to, I want to, I want a Wildland style tactical shooter with some Gears of War gore. Yes. Like sawing right. people in half with chainsaws. <laughs> no, but yeah. like you something know? like that. Like if you get if you get popped in the head, get maimed. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. Yeah. People should get maimed. You should see limbs get blown off. I mean, we are a game of war, right? So that's what it should be. But you know, I do think I I hope I don't think it's gonna happen, but I would hope Ubisoft would be able to figure out or just developers in general can figure out the open world setting, but telling a linear story. Grand Theft Auto does it pretty well to where they don't open the map up right away. You kind of go from one area to the next back and forth and the map opens up slowly. Uh, so they do a pretty good job of it. Ubisoft does a terrible job of it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, so. Yep. And then, uh, you know, better better ai it's just you know it's so many things that i've discussed on my channel you could sit here for an hour and talk about the mechanics and how they should operate how they should work how things should function teammate ai controls being able to control them and individually i have a video where i talked about building ai from the ground up and individual controls giving them giving them orders to where they can move at the same time throughout a, a compound yeah. Uh, setting up a system to where you could have point A, point B, point C. You know, AI control really needs to be in depth. Enemy AI needs that they need to work feel like they work as a unit, suppression mechanics, flanking mechanics. Anything that the developer creates for the player, I feel like the enemy should should do. What I mean by that is, for example, Ubisoft with Ghost Recon Breakpoint gave us a 
mechanic to heal ourselves in an injury system, yet you don't see this amongst the enemies. So I think I think if developers can get on board with that, uh, that would get close to you know my quote unquote dream game, I guess you would say, because I just want to really rock 'em sock 'em third person tactical shooter that you know it just you know hits all the bells and whistles and all the check marks and we really haven't haven't gotten that. Yeah. So that's that. The, yeah, and the, on that note too, like one of the things you touched on in there was like this, like your teammates and stuff, like suppression. Yeah. Where where is it, where is that in Breakpoint? Like, because even in Wildlands PvP, there was a suppression system. Yep. Like, if if I was shooting at another guy and he was behind cover, if I just laid down cover fire on that object of cover with, like, an LMG, his screen got all shaky, just like it did in Future Soldier. If you got yep. pinned down, like, you were suppressed. You couldn't do anything. You had to get out of there. You couldn't, you couldn't peek back up over that cover if somebody was blasting you with an LMG, you know? So that's I another mechanic that just kind of, like, just vanished into thin air. I don't know where these, like, I don't know how Paris just abandoned a lot of these systems that were already in place that they just had to tweak and make better. Yeah. Uh, so going back to a couple of super chats, Caleb Gamer, uh, Stabby McStab says, real talk, how do you get your channel to grow? I'd like to be able to have a community, but I don't know how. I don't post much because of it. I'll be honest with you. There's your problem. That, that's a that well, that's part of the problem is not posting much. I don't post as much as I probably should. Um, but there's not that much to talk about. My my channel is a ghost recon centric channel and look what we got to talk about. Yeah, if you look I'll... back to the times when my channel grew the most, there's three if you go back and I looked looked at my analytics of when I got the most subscribers, made the most money, made whatever you want to talk about, there was three big spikes on my in the history of my YouTube channel and I've had it since September of 2015, so it's coming up on six years that I've been on YouTube. Ghost Recon Wildlands, huge spike. State of Decay 2, when I when I cover State of Decay 2, like hardcore, massive spike. And then Ghost Recon Breakpoint, around the launch of all three of those games, massive spikes. Other than that, it's kind of hit or miss because there ain't that much to talk about, you know? So... Yeah. Yo, you keep have to grinding look. i would say keep putting up content you're even if you're not getting a lot of views you got to start somewhere you know so you have to make content that you want to make bro otherwise it's it, it won't work out that's yeah. my because now, now you can't look at, force something that you don't want to talk about because people are going to be able to hear it in your voice yeah too. and so you're not going to enjoy it so when you don't grow you're going to get frustrated so for instance right a squad just said he had a huge spike for breakpoint, right? Now that's relative to what was huge for him. I had a huge spike in breakpoint. It was basically the first time I started making videos where I talked about things, but my huge spike was relative to my channel. So you, so everything is going to be relative, bro. You have to understand that if you're starting from zero, once you get to 50, it's like, oh, wow, this is good. And you get to 100, and then you might stall, and then you get to 200. But if you love playing video games, and you love talking about this game or that game, and you have the ability to create content, just do it. And if the subs come, they come. If they don't, you'll still be doing something that you enjoy doing, which is gaming and talking about games. And Yeah. Yeah, it, it was tough. Like when I started out trying to cover, trying to cover Call of Duty. That was that was a dead end road. Um, um, but real quick, another super chat. Canadian cop, another twenty dollars and ninety nine cents. Canadian um, says there's a rumor that RTX, AMD, and the next gen consoles are running very low on supplies and they won't be available till early to mid twenty twenty two. That, other than a few things here and there, you're right. Because I actually have a couple of buddies that are sort of on the ins with Microsoft. Like they got a lot of inside details from Microsoft, and yeah, everybody's suffering because nobody can like all of these things it's like the silica the silica that's in the gpus the silica that's in the consoles the silica that's in the cpus and all that stuff nobody can get enough of it to make all of these parts especially with all of these new tech like the rtx cards and the next gen consoles that use that silica and if they don't have the proper yields it just yeah. gets tossed you know so you have waste if they're not getting the proper yields on those things so yeah i mean you're not gonna see like 
and that was the thing too is, is I saw a video somebody put up the other day talking about them possibly trying to release a 3080 Ti and it's like Nvidia is just completely out of their damn minds if they do that like stop worrying about another higher end card if you can't even keep the 3080s on the shelf you know but I would love to be able to get one I'm lucky I'm very lucky that I stood in line for like six hours the day that the pre-orders went live for the Series X, I got a Series X sitting on my desk. Yeah, I feel so lucky I got a PS5, man. And I was able to enjoy Returnal, some Demon Souls, and whatever the future holds, Ratchet and Clank, anything. For real, man. I count my blessings. The gaming gods were good for me on that day. Yeah. Yeah, I waited. Like I said, I there was 11 consoles at my store. The GameStop that I go to, they had 11 consoles to pre-order. And I was taking zero chances. I showed up at 4.30 in the morning. (laughs) And there was nobody in line yet, so I just kind of sat there and waited. And then somebody pulled up at 7 o'clock. I grabbed my folding chair out of my car, went over and put my folding chair right next to the door, and I sat there. I sat there until they opened up pre-orders at 11 a.m. So I sat in that chair for four hours. But I got a Series X. And then you had some of these people that were showing up at like 10, 15, 10, 30, expecting to get one. And then they got upset when they didn't. Like there was this one lady that asked me, she's like, I can't believe, I, th- I thought I would have got one. I thought they would have had more. She's like, well, what time did you get here? And I'm like, uh, I got here at 4.30 this morning, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I got like the dirtiest look. Cause like, yeah, I've been here for six hours already, lady. You know, I knew how rare these things were going to be and how hard these things were going to be to find. I took zero chances. So... Uh, Caleb Garner with another $10 super chat. My Lord, sir, um, says right now I live stream from the PS4 once in a while. And I love that. I'm not a hundred percent sure how to edit videos just yet. What software to use, what capture media, et cetera. Um, any recommendations? Um, you know, if I, you don't have a P if you don't have a PC, your first order is to get a PC. Yeah, that would be the first step. Cause if you're going to use it. like a capture card and to record and stream and all that stuff, the PC is the first thing. And I, I personally use just like an Elgato. I got, uh, I think it's was, I spent Buku dollars. Well, actually I didn't, my, my wife got it for me for Christmas, but it was the, uh, Elgato 4k 60 Mark II. It's an internal capture card that plugs into one of your like PCIe ports. Um, yeah, that's what I have, but I don't use it. I don't use it for getting game footage. I just put the game right onto my USB. Gotcha. So he wouldn't ha- he wouldn't have to No, he wouldn't have that. to do that. But he needs a PC so he can get editing software. Yeah. And I personally mic. just use a free editing software that I don't even know if you can get it anymore because I told Bay-Z about it and he said he couldn't find it because they don't have like the version that I have like downloaded onto my computer. Yeah. I don't I couldn't I tried with Sony Vegas and then uh, Adobe Premiere. I tried and I was like, "Nope. I'm good. I use a free software called HitFilm." It's got some really intricate, like, uh, um, it's very basic when it comes to like your transitions and your editing, that kind of thing. But then you, with your different settings of like how you can render the video of like the, the, the frame rate and the other stuff that you can do with all the different settings in there, it's, it's good and it's free. I'm not good enough to have to pay for my editing software, I should say. So it works for me. I've never had any issues. Once I got away from Windows Movie Maker from like my early days on YouTube and I got the hit film and I've had hit film for like probably four years now and it's nobody's like if you look at my some of my like high end video that I try to record like my 1440p, you know, super high bit rate videos and you compare them to somebody that's using Adobe Premiere, you probably couldn't tell the difference, to be honest. So I um, mean, he says he has an uh, HP Omen 15 gaming laptop. That would work. You would just need an external capture card. Because that, you wouldn't be able to put an internal capture card. So you could get, like, if you went with Elgato, you would just get, like, an Elgato HD60 or something like that, an external capture card. Would allow you to capture it, but then you'd still need, like, an editing software um, and stuff on there. So, but dude, speaking of gaming laptops... Bought my my bought uh, my wife's doing college classes online, and I actually picked up a new laptop for her at Best Buy today. I'm kind of salty. I'm kind of jealous. It's got a better <laughs> it's got a better GPU in it than my PC has. What does it have? Uh, it's got a 2070 Super in it. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. It's got an Intel a 10th gen Intel i7 
with an RTX 2070 Super. Why the hell did you buy her that? Huh? Because it was on yeah. sale. It was a really oh. good price. Jeez. Yeah. It's got 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs of RAM. It's like a 15 and a half inch screen. It's a it's an ROG. It's a Republic of Gamers. And it was on sale for like $400 off at Best nice. Buy. But yeah, it's got a, a 10th Gen i7 and an RTX 2070 yeah. Super. I'm just like, yeah, damn, crazy. I'm salty, man. I just got a stock 1080 in my, in my desktop. Jeez, man. Ugh. So, Jonathan, as far as the PlayStation 5 with the adaptive triggers, the haptic feedback, the haptic feedback is absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the best features that make the console feel next gen because it's it doesn't just it's not just a, a vibrating controller the controller actually is lit it's like it feels like a living thing that you're that you're holding while you're playing the game and if the programmers do a really good job it, 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 as far as returnal goes it's it's unbelievable to experience man the only thing i wish that these next gen i wish this gen had done was add some buttons maybe on the where you hold it like on the back or something i feel like i feel like they could start trying to expand the button selection on these consoles yeah i don't think they're gonna yeah xbox does that like with their elite controller yeah like the xbox like, elite v2 it has it on the elite. back right yeah there's you can have there's four buttons on the back yeah that like that like i feel like that should become standard at this point yeah you you add an, an extra couple buttons on the back and this way you can you could allow the developers to do a little bit uh, they could add more mechanics to their games because you'll have more buttons to press yeah, yeah and as jay, far as the haptic feedback it's amazing yeah jay was talking about there too the trigger feedback would be great for grand turismo i would imagine that would be cool like a full-blown racing game with haptic feedback That'd be yeah. cool. That'd yeah, be really it's probably cool. going to be awesome with Gran Turismo because that's a PS5 exclusive. Yep. So all the exclusives is basically when you're going to feel the most of the uh, the haptic feedback because third-party games, they're probably not going to go out of their way since they're creating the game for so many things like Xbox and PC. So it's it's when you get the exclusives that you're really going to feel the most of it. Yeah, and Caleb says, uh, do I need the Elgato for the PC? Or for the PS4. If you want to capture gameplay from your PS4, you'll need the capture card hooked to your... Basically, like, you have an HDMI going from, like, the in port. It's like the in and out. So, basically, you have an HDMI going from the capture card to your PC. And then another HDMI going from the capture card to your console. And that basically will capture all of your gameplay that you're using, like, you're playing on your console. And then send it in and save it as an MP4 file on your PC. So, then you can open it up in an editing software. If money so. is tight, I would say no. If you have money, then yes. If you are putting together a PC and you're scraping by and you're trying to get the best bang for your buck, I would go the old school route, which is what I do still because my capture card is in my streaming PC. So I don't have it hooked up to my gaming PC. Uh, you just record the footage on your console and you use a USB to bring it over to your computer. Yeah, it takes a while to bring it on from your console to the USB, but it'll save you a few hundred dollars. Yeah. And then if you have the money, then you go the route of just using the capture card. This way it goes right to your computer. Yeah, Zer was it uh, Zer Zerldo? Zerldo TV. Scuff controllers Roughneck, as a standard. Later, brother. Good stream, dude. Hopefully not scuff controllers. Scuff controllers are cheap as hell, dude. When you actually like get into I had a scuff, a recent scuff, that thing was cheap. The amount of joysticks that I went through because they wear so fast and the sticks or the, the paddles on the back that broke, I would definitely swear by a, like an Elite 2, Elite version 2, Xbox Elite 2. That thing is nice and it is, it's solid. Um, and then also Damar Hall says, uh, how much was the laptop? I think it was like $1,200, 12, 1250, something like that. It's on sale. It's a great deal. Yeah, like I said, it was, a, it was a 10th gen i7 mm -hmm. with an RTX 2070 Super. Yeah, that's crazy. it. Was a, it was a that's a huge upgrade. A Asus, Asus ROG Republic of Gamers laptop. It was nice. I was I was jealous. 
I was like, damn, man, I could put Ghost Recon at and then use my current PC as, like, my streaming PC. Mm-hmm. So, Hook yeah, Roughneck, take it easy, buddy. Hook up a keyboard and mouse to it. Mm-hmm. Run a, run a, uh, you could run a HDMI from the laptop to your main monitor and just put the, put, put, put the laptop down. Well, and play normally. Yeah, and then uh, Dust Drama 26. There actually is a capture card that Elgato makes that you don't need a PC for at all. It literally, you just plug it into your yeah. console and then it records it like internally on the capture card and then it just like saves it. Yeah, well, like, I, I don't know. It's a USB connection. Yeah, it's just like a USB thing and it allows you to like not have to have a PC to like record to. So then you could just like take that to a PC or, you know, whatever I guess you'd want to do at that point. But you don't necessarily need that to capture it because they do actually have a, a capture card that doesn't require a PC. So. Um, Andrew, did you see the Halo Infinite Razorback Warthog cousin? I think I did. It was a screenshot of it. I think it looked really, really cool. Yeah, the Elgato 4K 60 s plus yeah it was one of those newer ones that they came out with more recently that allowed you to record without basically having a hook to a pc so um but at that point with what we've talked about this evening um i don't know if there's anything do is there anything else we want to get into no i think that's it we kind of just uh hung out this last half hour or so and just talked about whatever but we covered everything <sighs> you know we We'll see. We'll see what the future holds for all of us, whether it's Ghost Recon or the Division or what Ubisoft has in store. So, yeah, I think we're good. Well, we can only hope that whatever this Division game that's coming out, you know, is well made, has a good replay value. Because, like, that's the thing is, is like, I'm not big into playing the Division. Like, I played the Division one a lot, the Division two a lot, but I would prefer to play Ghost Recon. But yeah, if whatever this is that comes out is fun and it has like yeah. some good replay value, it, it'll give us something to do. Obviously, we are yeah. getting two DLCs for Breakpoint, but after that, with what they showed on like the finance stuff, who knows yep. what's next for yep. Ghost Recon? You know, as as a franchise. So, um, but with that being said, I think that's where we're gonna end the tactical roundtable this evening. Do make sure I'm not exactly sure what day. We're going to be doing it, but stay tuned because we will be doing another another tactical roundtable next week. That's all I can say. We will be doing another tactical roundtable next week. Um, but I really appreciate everybody tuning in, uh, G Money, for for being on here as well. Because um, I don't know if I could do this for this long solo. There's no way. <laughs> and oh, having man, having you know, other, the you chat's know, you opinions and is. your opinions and stuff on all this stuff is uh, is huge. So. Um, but yeah, I will definitely let everybody know on like Twitter and, and, uh, on the YouTube community tab when we're going to be doing another one of these. Um, if everything goes how we want it to go, I guess with like my personal schedule, G's personal schedule and stuff, we're going to try to do at least another four of these within the next month or so. That's kind of the goal. Um, that's, that's what I'm going to leave it at. So, um, but, yep, uh, definitely. I There's do. a lot of plans for the future. Let's just let's just say that we definitely are, uh, you know, with Ubisoft um, forward coming in June and the anticipation of new content. There's definitely going to be a lot more to talk about. Plus, you know, there's there are other things like today. What happened uh, with uh, this article that we read off with everything going free to play. So. We're definitely going to be doing a lot more of these moving forward. So just stay tuned, man. And we appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out, sharing your thoughts. And yeah. All right. Well, I think that's where we're going to end it. So take it easy, everybody. Be safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. So we'll pretty much do whatever you want. So don't do anything he wouldn't do. do. So basically <laughs> do what I would do. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. And uh, we will catch you in the next one. Later, guys.